And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Coelophysis, which was a request from Jeremy via Patreon and also Jurassic 1231256. So thanks. Coelophysis was a coelophysid theropod that lived in the Triassic in what is now the southwestern U.S., also South Africa and Zimbabwe. The name means hollow form and refers to its hollow bones that made it light. Material from similar animals have been found in some late Triassic and early Jurassic formations. Coelophysis is one of the earliest known dinosaurs. It's small and slender. It was a bipedal carnivore. And it grew up to 9.8 feet or 3 meters long. And it weighed up to 60 pounds or 27 kilograms. Wow, that's pretty big. Mm -hmm. The type species is Coelophysis bari. There's a second species, Coelophysis rhodesiensis. And that was formerly known as Meganopsaurus. Other species included Coelophysis longicollis and Coelophysis willstoni, but those are now considered to be synonyms of Coelophysis bari. There's a third possible species, Coelophysis cayentacate, which was also previously Megapnosaurus, but not everybody agrees on this. Coelophysis had a similar body shape to other theropods, but with some differences. It had an S-curved neck, and Coelophysis bari had one of the earliest known wishbones in a dinosaur. It also had a long, narrow head, forward-facing eyes, and good depth perception, and vision that was about as good as eagles and hawks. It had a long snout with long fenestrae, the openings, to help reduce weight, and it had blade-like recurved teeth with serrations. These teeth were good for slicing. Coelophysis probably ate small lizard-like animals. It may have been an opportunistic carnivore, which means it would have been a predator and a scavenger, and it was fast and agile and had long legs. It also had a long, slender neck and tail. The tail was semi-rigid, so it didn't move up and down. On the hands, it had four digits, but only three were functional. Coelophysis also had narrow hips and forelimbs that it could use for grasping. In 2002, Carpenter found that Coelophysis had flexible forelimbs, though they were weak. So that and the fact that Coelophysis had small teeth means that it probably preyed on animals much smaller than itself. They also found Coelophysis to be a combination grasper-clutcher. Coelophysis had narrow feet and three toes on each feet. There's two forms of Coelophysis body types that have been found, gracile and robust. And the gracile form has a longer skull and neck and shorter forelimbs. The robust form has a shorter skull and neck and longer forelimbs. This may be due to sexual dimorphism. The gracile form may have been female. That would have been easier for egg laying. About 50% of the population found was gracile and 50% robust, which further supported this idea of sexual dimorphism. However, later research found that both species of Coelophysis had variable growth, and the gracile and robust forms may just have been individual variation. Yeah, then it's just like you draw the line down the middle and you say all the ones on this half are gracile and all the half on this one are robust, but really there's a lot of in-between, so it's not so easy. Yeah, yeah, it's always hard to differentiate between male and female. Mm -hmm. Especially with dinosaurs, they have a lot more variability than some modern animals. Mm -hmm. Reinhardt and others found in 2009 that a female Coelophysis would have laid between 24 and 26 eggs in each clutch. Wow. And they found some evidence of some parental care during the first year of their hatchling's life. Coelophysis grew rapidly, especially during the first year that they lived. They probably reached the full size by the time they were eight years old. Coelophysis was one of the earlier named dinosaurs. It was named in 1887 by Edward Drinker Cope and described by Cope in 1889. David Baldwin, an amateur fossil collector who worked for Cope, found the first bones back in 1881 in the Chinle Formation in New Mexico. Originally, Coelophysis bari was named Silurus bari. Cope referred to these specimens as Silurus bari and Silurus longicollis in 1887 and then reassigned them to Tanistropheus later that year. And then in 1889, Cope reassigned, renamed those bones to Coelophysis bari. The species is named for George Barr, a comparative anatomist who had similar ideas to Cope. So Coelophysis has a few synonyms, Longosaurus, Rioaribosaurus, and Megapnosaurus. The first bones found of Coelophysis were not well preserved. But then in 1947, George Whitaker, assistant to Edwin Colbert from the American Museum of Natural History, found a Coelophysis bone bed of hundreds, maybe over 1,000 specimens in New Mexico at Ghost Ranch, near where the first fossils were found. Colbert assigned the fossils to Coelophysis, so many specimens were found, and then one of those became the new diagnostic specimen for Coelophysis. 
In the 1980s, there were debates that the first Coelophysis specimens were not diagnostic by themselves, meaning it's not just not enough to go on. Yeah, not unique enough compared to other dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And that other specimens, therefore, couldn't be applied to Coelophysis barae. And then in 1991, people were saying that the Ghost Ranch quarry specimens could be Rio Arribosaurus. However, the fossils from Ghost Ranch were called Coelophysis in most scientific papers, which would make switching them to Rio Arribosaurus confusing, so there was a petition to change the type specimen of Coelophysis to one of the Ghost Ranch specimens. The ICZN voted to make one of the Ghost Ranch specimens the new type specimen and declared Rio Arribosaurus a nomum rejectum, which means rejected name, hmm. and Coelophysis became a nomum conservatum, which means conserved name. Interesting. Yeah, they step in a lot. It's interesting to hear these stories. There are a lot, and they're kind of inconsistent in terms of, we usually simplify by just saying the oldest one wins, mm -hmm. but then there are a lot of exceptions. Right. Especially for these dinosaurs that were found in the 1800s. Yeah. And for ones that are really iconic or well-known, or in this case, all over the literature. Mm -hmm. So based on the finds of the Ghost Ranch bone bed, Coelophysis may have hunted in packs. There's no direct evidence that Coelophysis hunted in packs, just that they were buried together. That's typically what we see. That's basically the evidence for a Velociraptor and those similar dinosaurs too. It's a like, lot of the theropods, yeah. They died together, so they probably lived together. And since they eat meat, they might have gotten that meat together. Right, especially <laughs> when you see ones that are different ages. Mm -hmm. But it's possible that they died together because they all drank at a water hole or they went to go eat some fish and then died by a catastrophic flash flood or maybe there was a drought. Yeah, or even they were just drawn to an animal that one of them killed. Yep. And then died together. 30 specimens of Coelophysis rhodesiensis were found together in Zimbabwe, but there's no direct evidence of pack hunting. They may have also died from a flash flood. In 1969, Mike Roth describes Centarsis rhodesiensis, and Centarsis means fused ankle. Michael Ivey and others who studied beetles found that Centarsis was already the name of a beetle that was named in 1869. And because Ivy and his team figured this out, they were able to rename the dinosaur. And they named it Megapnosaurus, which means big dead lizard. <laughs> That's really funny. Understandably, Mike Roth did not like this. Ivy and his team did not contact Roth beforehand to tell him either. So in 2004, Roth argued that Magnopsaurus, or Centarsis, was a junior synonym of Coelophysis, and then others agreed in other papers throughout the years. In 2005, Yates found that Coelophysis and Magnopsaurus were nearly identical and suggested that they synonymize them. In 2004, Tykowski and Rowe found it to be, also found it to be synonymous with Coelophysis, and they confirmed this in 2007 by Escura and Novas. In 2000, Downs found that another dinosaur, Camposaurus arizonensis, was a junior synonym of Coelophysis barai, though in 2011, Martin Escura and Stephen Brusati found Camposaurus was distinct enough to be its own genus, though it was closely related to Coelophysis rhodesiensis. Professor Mignon Talbot found a specimen in 1911 that she named Podocosaurus holiocensis that for a while was considered to be related to Coelophysis, but now some people think is actually a synonym. Some scientists think that Coelophysis barai is the same as Coelophysis rhodesiensis, which used to be Centarsis, also known as Mega Megapnosaurus. It's getting complicated. It always is with these older dinosaurs. That's very true. Especially with this pre-internet stuff. It's like no one could just Google it to see if that name had been used before. So you get a lot of these, oops, I named that dinosaur and it was already a different animal. So now people probably never make that mistake. Hopefully not. <laughs> Don't know for sure. But in 2000, Downs, and then in 2004, Tykowski and Rowan, also Bristow and Roth, found that Coelophysis barai is different from Coelophysis rhodesiensis. Coelophysis was thought to be cannibalistic based on juvenile specimens found in the guts of some of the specimens from Ghost Ranch. It's pretty good evidence. Yes, but in 2002, Robert Gay found that this was misinterpreted. Instead, the juvenile Coelophysids were small reptiles. Oops. And Nesbitt and others supported this in 2006. In 2009, Reinhardt and others re-examined a specimen and found teeth and jawbone fragments in and around the mouth that were, quote, morphologically identical, end quote, to juvenile Coelophysis. In 2010, Robert Gay found that the volume of bones was 17 times greater than the maximum estimated volume of a Coelophysis stomach and also found an absence of tooth marks and that the juvenile bones were deposited stratigraphically below the animal that ate them. Meaning that it was older, so something else died on top of it. 
Yes. He found that the position they were found in were a, quote, coincidental superposition of different sized individuals, end quote. So Robert Gay is really standing up for the coelophysids, trying to show that they're not cannibals. Not cannibals, no. <laughs> Coelophysis lived in what is now New Mexico in a warm, monsoon-like climate. Coelophysis rhodesiensis lived among desert dunes. Coelophysis was the second dinosaur in space after Myasaura. Hmm. There's a Carnegie Museum Coelophysis skull that was on the Space Shuttle Endeavor mission STS-89 in January 1998 and was also taken to the space station Mir before going back to Earth. That's really interesting. I guess it makes sense because it's a relatively small skull. Mm -hmm. Taking up Myasaur, that's kind of crazy. That's a pretty big one. Mm, not that big. Big old Hadrosaur? Yeah. Compared to something like a T-Rex. Oh, it could be bigger. That's true. Yeah. But every pound counts when you go into space. True. Coelophysis is the official state dinosaur of New Mexico and is the logo of the New Mexico Museum of Natural History. And Coelophysis barre became New Mexico state fossil back in 1981. And if you want to see Coelophysis, you can see it in the first episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. It's a good one. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 